Hey guys, welcome back to You Decide. In our last video, we touched on EXW and how choosing this term could work with or against you. Uh, please note, my videos just touch on the baseline of these terms and if you wish to know more, I've shared a link in the description box for further research. At the end of the day, choosing the right income term for your business can directly impact your landing cost. And I don't want to be negative Nancy, but I have heard some horror stories of people choosing the wrong income term and things going wrong. But anyway, moving on. So today we will touch on FCA. This means free carrier, where the seller's obligations are to deliver the cargo to agreed upon port, known as the name place. So usually this term is used in conjunction with containerized goods, so goods in a container. In simple terms, the seller is responsible for exporting the shipment and all steps before that. So we'll get into that. The buyer assumes responsibility of the cargo once they are ready to be loaded onto the carrier. So FCA can be used for any type of transport such as air freight, sea freight, road and rail. The advantages of this, it provides the buyer with flexibility as they can arrange carriage at a better price than what the seller quoted. So let's look at the responsibilities of the buyer and the seller. So the seller is responsible for the full export process for the goods they are selling. So this includes export packaging, loading charges, delivery to port or place, export duty, taxes, and customs clearance. This could also include uh, customs examinations, pre-shipment inspection, and so on. So in summary, when a seller is quoting a price to the buyer, he or she will include the fee, which will include the costs for the seller to fulfill the above duties. Once these are met, the cargo can be transferred to the buyer. So basically, in this example, using FCA via containerized goods, the logistics then falls on the buyer. So the buyer's responsibilities are the origin, terminal charges, which is the main portion of the transportation process, such as loading on the carriage, carriage charges, insurance, destination terminal charges, delivery to destination, unloading at destination, as well as import duty, taxes and customs clearance. So the advantages of this is the buyer gets to control the logistics of the shipment from country of origin to destination. So the buyer usually relies on the shipping service provider to find the best price and solution for the cargo from the port of origin to the final destination. So usually in these cases, the buyer is very confident in the shipping service provider as long as they can beat the loading costs offered by the seller. So how will you know if your shipping service provider can beat the costs of the seller? By getting different quotes from uh, different shipping service providers and comparing it with the quote um, given to you by the seller. So the dis disadvantages of uh, this INCO term, which is FCA, is not having enough knowledge on the ground of the logistics process and requirements in the seller's country. Anyway, we will move on to the next one, which is FAS. Thanks for listening. Ciao for now.